My theorist presentation is on Dr. Eve Tuck. Tuck is a writer, researcher, and educator. She was born in Pennsylvania, but considers St. Paul Island, Alaska, her home. This is where many of her relatives live. She identifies as native from the Yunangax tribe. For my presentation, I will focus on her accomplishments and how she fits in with the education system. I won't be doing all the talking, as I have some important clips from Tuck who will briefly explain some of her work. Tuck had a love-hate relationship with research. Her family had taught her at a young age not to trust researchers because it had led her family's community into forced labor and relocation. This was due to the harvest and processing of seals. Eventually, she viewed research as a way of creating change and was convinced to go into it herself. Tuck has won the William T. Grant Scholar Award from 2015 to 2020. This is a foundation that invests in high-quality research focused on reducing inequality in youth outcomes and improving the use of research evidence and decisions that affect young people in the United States. She was also a Ford Foundation postdoctoral fellow from 2011 to 2012. Eve Tuck earned her PhD in urban education at the Graduate Center at University of New York in 2008. She has worked with an associate professor of critical race and indigenous studies at the Ontario Institute for Studies in Education at the University of Toronto. She also continues her research. Her work focuses on urban education and indigenous studies. Her research is on how indigenous social thought can be engaged to create more fair and just social policies and more meaningful social movements. She contributes to educational research and indigenous studies in both urban and rural areas, which has allowed her to create more effective social policies for marginalized youth. Her efforts in curricular studies is focused on remembering the true purposes of knowledge in and for communities. She lists that this should include uncovering the quiet thoughts and beliefs of the community, mapping the variety of ideas in a community, making generational knowledge of elders, youth, parents, warriors, hunters, leaders, gardeners, fishers, teachers, and others available to other generations, using the home languages to express ideas and to bring new languages to new and recovered ideas, and honoring all of the relationships by engaging in the flow of knowledge and community in the ways that reflect epistemology, cosmology, and relations to the land. I read one of her interviews and found a very powerful quote that gives me hope. She said, From a very young age, I understood that inequity and inequality are created by society. To me, that means that we can change them. Another area of curriculum that Tuck has been critical of is standardized testing. She states, and I quote, I am troubled by any kind of curriculum or test-based policy that says learning happens only in one particular way. The process of learning by definition, cannot be standardized. Tuck is both an author and an editor for several books and journals. Her most well-known are Suspending Damage, A Letter to Communities, Decolonization is Not a Metaphor, A Glossary of Haunting, and Urban Youth and School Pushout. She also has a podcast series called The Henceforward, which is about the relationship between Indigenous and Black communities on Turtle Island. I was not sure where Turtle Island was, so I did some research. It is referring to what many of us might be more familiar with as North America. If you would like to listen to any of these podcasts, there are several available free online. Even though a lot of Tuck's work is really heavy subjects, I highly recommend you listen to it because it'll definitely help you as a teacher. And she's really engaging and easy to listen to. One of Tuck's other objectives is rethinking the aims of research in curricular studies so that indigenous communities and other over-researched but invisibilized communities can reject narratives and theories that have been used against them. Yeah. I'm now going to play a quick piece of a lecture that she did and I hope that it helps you better understand what her research is all about and inspires you as a teacher. We do not say that all education programs should be called social justice programs. Rather, we say that social justice is the ghost in the machine of the educational apparatus. It is the only part that makes any of the parts of the field of education matter. With or without formally institutionalizing social justice education, 
It is not a countercultural movement within the broader field of education. Thus, social justice is not some boutique aspect of the field of education, some little meandering down a curious alley. This is not a conversation at the margins of the field. Social justice education, whether we continue to use those words to define it, is the crux of the future of our field. Social justice is not the other of the field of education. It is the field. There is no future in the field of education without the contributions of people who are doing their work under the rising sign of social justice. There is no legitimacy to the field of education if it cannot meaningfully attend to social contexts, to historical and contemporary structures of settler colonialism, white supremacy, and anti-blackness. Social justice is not the catch-all. It is the all. I was happy to do research on Tuck because this is an area that I'm still worried about as a teacher. I was not taught about Indigenous history in school. Because of this, I don't feel like I have a lot of background knowledge. Luckily, I have been exposed to some history of Indigenous people in my undergrad and in the education program. I will keep doing research and finding support in things such as Tuck's work to make sure that I include it in my own teaching. She has proven to be a very inspirational person who is advocating for change, and I believe she's a positive role model for us as teachers and as human beings in general. Thank you.